about six years ago, when I came back from the UK, I was going about everywhere, looking for chemistries, some equipments, old equipments, just to rebuild back my practice. Interesting part about those days, I met with quite a number of uh, people, studio owners, old practitioners. But up to this day, nothing beats one of my encounter up north. There was this old retired silversmith. And of course, my, my interest was uh, quite obvious there. I was interested in actually trying to understand on how he goes about making his own silver nitrate from what I heard. He does it quite well. And he told me to go out and purchase some silver and also at the same time I call it Pulas, uh, in which later on I found out it was actually something quite susceptible to this item. And the thing was, after buying all that and I came back to him, he, he was a retired silversmith, so he, he practically told me, might as well I like, teach you what I know. And because like there's nothing for him to consider to bring it to his grave and he was thinking like might as well do something good with his knowledge and I told him the first thing I wanted to learn was how to go about making a proper silver nitrate so yeah um, I came back to him with with a few ingots of silver the pulas and we spent one afternoon batching up and he, he came about with a, this bottle of liquid and he called it as a acid perak in which I have no clue what it was until like about a bit slightly later I was a bit concerned because one way of making silver nitrate was using nitric acid and he took the cap of that bottle, put it in my hand, and pour like a thimble, and my hand was exposed. And I realized it was nitric acid, so I asked him, what happens if I just like, if that thing spilled over my hand or on my fingers, suddenly it'll get burned or something like that. So he told me, well, that's a bucket of water right there. So okay, so I sort of um, began to understand <laughs> what I was in for. And the interesting part was, it wasn't just about how it was made as well, but then uh, we began cooking the, uh, the silver, the nitric acid, and of course it just whip out, lash out a violent cloud of uh, nitrous dioxide. So he just took his sarong and just covered his face, just we were running around the solution or the cooking solution and I was I was without any mask and actually I think I choked a little bit and as you know like nitrous dioxide if it, one whiff your lungs could collapse and that's not good so okay besides all the dangers what was interesting was it his method had produced one of the, uh, the most beautiful silver nitrate uh, crystals I ever seen and what I'm saying is um, usually in the past uh, when I was doing this in the lab what I had produced was um, cr clumps of crystals that's pretty much it it looked like salt or clumpy large salts and but for his that was different it was oops silky and uh, 
like a spider web. I never seen anything like that. I mean, I've done a few, not that many, but I've done a few times of doing this. It's always ended up as crystal. But what you did was it looks soft, silky. It was. I had a moment and I thought like, wow, this guy's like Heinzenberg for me. So I spent another two weeks trying to learn that method. It's not easy. I mean, like it so happened that if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And just like try to repeat his method. But I've, eventually I got got a hang of it. And that crystal was so easy. Well, silver nitrate is very easy to dilute in water solution. So it's not much that, but it's just how he did it was very artistically done nicely done as well he told me as well that he knew a method of um, make turning gold as orange as a lobster during that time I was so engrossed on that silver nitrate making of the silver nitrate but so I didn't I didn't take priority but I said yeah I'll, I'll come back to him to, to learn more about that but since then I think he was quite ill I think I had a chance to go back to him to learn more about it that was my grief on that regret